I'm Dr. Chris Creighton, and in this video, we're continuing to discuss properties of logarithms. So we're going to be discussing uh, more techniques of using properties of logarithms, particularly logarithms in base e and base 10. Those are the common and natural logarithms, and then be able to change the base of our logarithms. And this will actually let us use our calculators to figure out these values. So let's get started with an example. Um, you may recognize this one. So suppose you know that uh, to three decimal places that log base 3 of 4 is 1.262 and log base 3 of 5 is 1.465. We want to find these, these four different values. So for each of these, what you want to do is try to express the numbers on the inside. So like for instance on this first one, this 20, in terms of the, the values 3, 4, and 5. So in this case here, we know that 20 is equal to 4 times 5, so that is log base 3 of 4 times 5, which then using our properties of logarithms splits up into additions. So this is log base 3 of 4 plus log base 3 of 5, which actually lets us add these two values together. So adding we get 1.262 plus 1.465, we get that this sum is equal to 2.727 to three decimal places. So that is how to compute log base 3 of 20. So now computing log base 3 of 2, we go like, we don't actually have 2 in our list, but we have 4. 4 is 2 squared. So expressing the 2 in terms of a 4, we can say that log base 3 of 2 is the square root of 4. Well, that is equal to log base 3 of 4 to the 1 half power, which is equal to 1 half log base 3 of 4. So what we do is we divide log base 3 of 4 by 1 half. So we get 1.262 divided by 2. So that is actually equal to 0.631. That allows us to evaluate it by recognizing two, uh, 4 as a power of 2, allowing us to divide the exponent. So 60. This one's a little bit bigger. So this one I recognize as equal to log base 3. Well, that's 3 times 20. Well, look at that. We already know what log base 3 of 20 is, so that's equal to log base 3 of 3 plus log base 3 of 20. Now, what's really nice about these ones is that you actually know also not only the um, log base 3 of 4 and log base 3 of 5, you also know log base 3 of powers of 3. So this is equal to 1 plus 2.727, which is equal to 3.727 which is excellent. And then for our last one, log base 3 of 2 divided by 15 is equal to log base 3 of 2 minus log base 3 of 15. Now we do not know what log base 3 of 15 is, but that one also been split up because 15 is 3 times 5. So that's equal to log base 3 of 2 minus log base 3 of 3 minus log base 3 of 5. Number one error I see there is forgetting to subtract on both of them. So that is equal to 1.262 minus 1 minus 1.465. So doing that one, so I got 1.262 minus 1 minus 1.465. So I got this is equal to minus 1.203, which is completely fine. You can actually get negative numbers out of logarithms. Don't be alarmed when you see things like that. How do we get these numbers? So like, like how do we know what like log base 3 of 4 is? Stuff like that. Um, back in the old days, they didn't really use those alternative base logs. Those alternative base logs are more of a modern technique, um, considering the fact we can evaluate these via a formula, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, what we started off with actually was this thing called the common logarithm. It's actually log base 10. So we say the common log, and this one is log, so look for that key. So this is log base 10 of x is equal to log of x. So if you do not see the base, so no base, that means that this is base 10. Just like if you see like an exponent that's in like 2, like 2 to the nothing up there, that means 2 to the 1. In this case here, if there's no base, that's base 10. 
the power of log base 10, and this is why it was introduced, I think around 1614 or something like that, is because of what's called scientific notation and the fact that they had logarithmic tables. So for example, computing log of 5.34 if we didn't have a calculator, that'd be kind of terrible to compute. But this is equal to log of 5, 3, 4 times 10 to the minus 2 using scientific notation. So the scientific notation means if we move the decimal over that by 2, and that gives us 10 to the negative 2 power. So this is essentially saying it's 534 divided by 100 to give us 5.34. So that then splits up as log of 534 plus log base 10 of 10 to the minus 2, which is very nice. This is log of 534 minus 2. And back in the old days, um, they actually only computed um, values of logarithms in the, in the hundreds. Like they would then go to a table and be like, okay, what is log of 534? And they had tables of logarithms going for like three digits going out very, very far. And so in this case here, they would look at the table and say like, well, log point, log of 534, well, that's about 2.727. So this will be 2.727 minus 2, so that'll be about 0 0.727. And so they would compute these logarithmic tables for nice large integer values and then make adjustments using scientific notation to actually evaluate the logarithms. And so that's the basic idea of the common log. That was the first log introduced. Again, it was around like 16, 13, 16, 14, around in there. The other one is called the natural logarithm. And actually, this one uh, spawned from the fact that there was this number e. So the number e is approximately 2.71. So the approximate value of e. And actually, it comes from the fact that in com from compound interest. So if you know like interest is compounded, so like if you put money into account after one month, it accumulates money on the interest going on forever. So in this case here, one of the formulas from compound interest is 1 plus 1 over n to the n. That's a, that's a very common part in compound interest. And so as n gets big, it's like really, really, really big. n represents the number of uh, times it's compounded per compounding period. So a very big number means that this thing is compounded by, like, by the millisecond or more. This thing approaches the value of e, and that's really where this is generated from. That is, so if you pick like n being like a million, you get a really nice approximation to the value e. But where does logarithms come in, uh, the natural log come in? Well, in this case here, we define the natural log as log base e of x is equal to ln of x. It's like log natural or something. I think it comes from French. So in this case here, the natural log is log base e. And this is as natural because it naturally shows up in uh, computations. For instance, compound interest. Uh, if you ever need to do anything with like uh, perhaps calculus and stuff like that, this was the one that will show up pretty frequently. The common log is common because that was what people had tables for. The natural log just showed up naturally in many scientific endeavors. So one last bit I just want to point out. The common log, the common log is always written L-O-G. So on a calculator, this is the button for it. Button. It says L-O-G, no base. Well, for the natural log, you're going to look for the button that says L-N. That is that one's button. These two are both on your calculator because they are the most commonly used. The common log shows up traditionally mostly because like that's what the log tables are from, and the natural log um, shows up in more common, more current scientific Stuff. So how would we compute log base b of a, so like log base 3 of 4, coming back to the first one? And the way we would do it is try to express it in either log base 10, the common log, or log base e, the natural log. All right. So back, back in the day, if you needed to know like what log base 3 of something was, you would convert it to log base 10 and then consult the logarithmic table. So how do we convert that? So the first thing we say is like, okay, well, we have log base b of a. I'm just going to call that x. So I'm going to call that x. So then we convert this to exponential form. 
So this is b to the x is equal to a. And say we want to convert this to a different base. Say I convert to, let's say base c or something like that. Like we want some third base, some other number. So like in our case, it would probably be the common log or the natural log, so like base 10 or base e. But in this case here, what we would do is take the log of the base we want of both sides, so we get b to the x is equal to log base c of a, and then use the properties of logarithms, so like this exponent would then pop out in front using the power rule. So that turns into x log base c of b is equal to log base c of a, which is rather nice, which then allows us to write x, which is equal to log base b of a, is equal to log base c of a divided by log base c of b. So this is called the change of base formula. It's rather nice. And so we get to pick c. So you can actually pick. This gets picked. It's one that you like, one that you know values of. Again, probably the common or natural log. So let's compute these using a calculator. You notice that some of these are a little bit more terrible than others. So like for instance, the classic one that's shown up quite a bit so far is log base two of three. So using the change of base, and again, you can change it to any base. So I'll do half of these with the common log and half of these with the natural log. You will actually get the same values. So in this case here, log of three divided by log of two is the, uh, what we get from the change of base using log base 10. So log of three divided by log of two, just punching that in my calculator, gives us 1.58. Five, rounding that to three decimal places. I, I will tell you where to round it. So I'm going to say three decimals here. So typically what you'll want to do is punch this all in at once. So like for instance, if I do these separately, so like log of three, well log of three, that's equal to 0 0.477. Log of two, that is 0 0.301. And if I divide those, 0.301, this actually is equal to, well, this is, this is pretty close, 1.58. We're all actually off by like a smidge. So if I said to four decimal places, these would be incorrect. So I'll say four, seven, and actually if I didn't round this one, so I'll fix this one. So we get eight, four, nine, six. It's like, they're like slightly off from each other. So just be a little careful here. If you round too early, you may be off uh, to the right decimal precision. So I just wanted to point that out. I like to punch this uh, log base three, or sorry, log base 10 of three divided by log base 10 of two all at once in the calculator to avoid any potential routing issues, just let the calculator handle it. So next, log base one half of 15. I'll do the natural log, so this is equal to log of 15 divided by log of a half. And at this point here, we just punch that into the calculator. So log of 15 divided by log of a half. So that's equal to minus 3.907. Did a little rounding there at the end from a 6 to a 7. Which is also, I want to point out, equal to log of 15 divided by log of 1 half. Let's just double check that. These all, all these ratios will agree with each other. So in fact, that is the same there. So it does not matter which base you pick. It's just pick one that you can compute nicely. So these more terrible ones. So this is equal to log, the natural log of 3.82 divided by the natural log of 1.7. So doing this, so 0.382 divided by log of 1.7, I get that's 2.5. Two, six. That's pretty nice. And this last one here, this one I'll do a uh, common log. So this is log of 9.8 divided by log of 0.1, which actually we know is negative 1. So doing log of 9.8 divided by log of 0.1, that is equal to negative 0 0.991.
I just want to point out for these ones, I will specify whether to use a calculator, but for instance, either on a quiz or an exam, if I provide you the decimal values, you will mean to use the properties of logarithms. If I'm like, use the properties of logs to evaluate this, and given this information, I am not necessarily testing you get to get the right answer. I am looking for, can you use the properties of logarithms to evaluate these and express these in terms of uh, the values I give you.